Sucker Blue. I don't want to hold you back. What was that? This is going to be a good game. Uh, not this game. The best game ever. Hello and welcome to Hawks Recap. Game 18 has just concluded and the Blackhawks lose for the 8th straight game, although they do get a point in this one. Nevertheless, they still lose in overtime in Carolina by a score of 3-2. to two. So Cam Ward getting the start in net for the Blackhawks tonight. Pretty predictable since it would be the only time that the Blackhawks would be playing in Carolina this season. Of course, Cam Ward played for Carolina his entire career up until this past offseason when he signed with the Hawks. Won a Stanley Cup and Con Smythe with the Hurricanes, so it just made sense for him to start tonight. On the other side, you have Scott Darling, Chicago native, former Blackhawk, playing against his former team. So that was kind of a neat little storyline. You got former Hurricane playing against former Blackhawk, both facing their old teams. However, that wasn't the biggest storyline of this game. Instead, at least from the Hawks' perspective, it was Coach Colleton taking out that whisk and just mixing up those lines. And when you're on a seven-game losing streak, you're down side or down Kruger, why not? Why not throw things around, mix it up, see what happens, see if you can spark the team somehow. And for the most part, it seemed to work. Blackhawks came out in the first period and they looked pretty darn good. I wouldn't say they were dominating the play. I thought Hurricanes played pretty decently as well, but I would say the Hawks were the better team through the first 15 minutes. And this hasn't been an uncommon theme this year. The Hawks have had some pretty strong starts. They just can't seem to take advantage of them, but in this game, they do. Nine minutes into the game, Blackhawks on the rush. Patrick Kane with the puck on the right-hand side of the boards. Right along the blue line there, sauces a puck over to Yoki Haru, who takes a slap shot, and, well, there's just complete defensive meltdown in front by the Hurricanes, and Jonathan Taze is all alone by himself, screening Scott Darling, and Jonathan Taze tips the puck past Darling and in for 1-0 Hawks lead. That's a big confidence booster goal there because the Hawks offense has sure been struggling lately. Now they've gotten chances, they just can't seem to put it in, but they do in this one, and they grab the early lead. Like I mentioned, the Hawks were probably the better team through the first 15 minutes, but the Hurricanes came on strong the last five minutes, made a real solid push. Blackhawks were kind of lucky not to get called for a couple penalties there. It just seemed like the refs had their whistles swallowed in that first period. It was kind of interesting, but Hawks got lucky. They go into the second period up 1-0. Now, second periods haven't been all too kind for the Blackhawks so far this season. They've really struggled, and that's putting it quite lightly. Now, for the most part in this one, though, I thought they played pretty well, at least through the first half of the second period, and they played well enough to even extend their lead. It all starts out pretty innocently for the Hurricanes. Justin Falk tracking down a puck into his defensive zone, and then Kampf just straight up hustling, makes something out of nothing. He pressures Falk, strips him of the puck. The puck is lying there kind of in the high slot area. Cahoon comes on in to try and pick it up, or at least everyone thought so. He does a beautiful little backhand just between the legs drop pass to Debrinkat, who swoops in and the pure goal scorer that he is. He snipes it by Darling, and the Hawks are up 2-0, and things are looking pretty good. Seriously, though, that was an absolute gorgeous little pass by Cahoon. I mean, that is hockey IQ, hockey senses, playmaking ability. I don't know if that's something you can even teach, but that was just, oh, that was beautiful. But you know what wasn't beautiful? The rest of that second period, and it all starts because the refs decide not to swallow their whistles anymore. And I'm not trying to say the refs did a bad job. Those were good calls. I'm just saying. Blackhawks take back-to-back -back penalties, and the Hurricanes score on both of them. Basically, get goals one minute apart. And just like that, all that momentum, all that good feeling that the Hawks had is just gone. Just gone. And we have a 2-2 game going into the third. Now, the Blackhawks had opportunities in that second period to really essentially put this game away. They had chances to make it 3 or 4 nothing, but instead they turned into chances that just ended up being squandered. You had Nick Schmaltz on a breakaway. Now, to be fair to him, the puck was rolling the entire time. There's not really a whole lot he could have done there, but oh, it would have been nice for him to get a goal there. And then Patrick Kane had two one-time opportunities, one Taze didn't really put it in his wheelhouse, so he had to corral it, and that gave Darling enough time to slide over and make a really great save. And then the other one, just Darling, makes a great save anyhow. But just those three chances, you're like, oh, 
Ah, oh, if only we put those in. The third period would be more of a back-and-forth game. I thought the Hurricanes had probably the more dangerous chances in that third period. Cam Ward came up huge a couple times to keep this game tied up. And because of that, this game goes into overtime and the Blackhawks at least get a point. But the Hawks are on a seven-game slide, so it would be really, really nice for them to get that second point. And remember I always said that Coach Colleton's mixing up of the lines worked out pretty well for the most part. Well, for the most part, ended in overtime. I was not a fan of the lines he put out in the extra frame. The fact that Camp took the defensive zone draw instead of Anisimov or Taze thought was a mistake. The fact that Camp was out on the ice and Debrinkat never even touched the ice in overtime I thought was a mistake. you got to imagine he would have been on that third line, but still, just a mistake from my point of view. And it cost the Hawks, Ajo, about a minute into the overtime period, outweights everyone, puts a five-hole through Cam Ward, and just like that, the Hawks squander a two-goal lead in this one and drop their eighth straight game. Yes, they get a point, but that's just not good enough right now. Not enough to break that streak, and just a tough one. If you're looking for a silver lining, I thought the Hawks played pretty well. It was a good effort. The two penalties, the two power plays that the Hurricanes had in that second period were absolutely killer from the Hawks' perspective. And also, I mean, the Hawks play the Blues next. And, well, if there's any team that you would love to break a losing streak against, it would be that team. And with that, I say thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on the game down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. If you really want to go above and beyond to support me, I've got links to my Patreon and some merch down in the description. But most importantly, as always, stay safe and make good decisions. And I'll see you next time.